Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Modeler Nest. In this video I will show you a quick review and building process of the 7 second Vespid Yak Painter. The overall boxing and packing are really good, with a beautiful box art and a sturdy box. The sprue trees come in multiple receivable plastic bags. Starting with the upper and lower hole pieces, the upper hole piece features really amazing details, especially on the engine cover with hatches, hinges, bolts and open vents. The surface textures are quite smooth, showing some slight roughness around the casemate. Weld beads and flame cuts textures are incredible for this scale. On the lower hull there are some pretty nice details in the suspension with some access parts, springs and bolts. Even though these details will be hidden after assembling, they are very nicely molded and correct according to some pictures I found on the internet. Despite the high quality holes, the main star of these kits are the tracks. They come in link by length style with injection quality and level of details quite unusual for this scale and that we can only find in aftermarket products. Roads, products and idle wheels come in separate pieces, also well detailed and correct according to reference. Suspension arms come as individual pieces too, however they show some more prominent steam lines. Exhausts are also nice detail even with open ends, but as you can see there are seam lines in both sides. Not terrible, because there is no offset between the halves, so after some cleaning the shape of the piece will be preserved. The number of separate pieces is quite large, which really increases the kit details. However, as you can see, injection gates seem a little thick, especially for small pieces. So, some care must be taken while separating them from the tree, and also during cleaning. A little flash here and there, but in minor quantity. The monthlet guard casting texture is also amazing and adds a lot to the kit, as it is kind of the kit's forehead. The plastic barrel is well molded and has an open muzzle brake. There are two casemate roof options, depending on the markings you want to build. Despite the instructions indicate to glue the hatches in closed position, it is possible to use them open for the commander and gunner positions. As this kit is part of the Panther series from Vespid, there are some parts that are not for use, like the side armor plates. Actually, you can use them if you want, but they are not very common on this vehicle. The tools are molded separately. They are well detailed, but seam lines and injection gates demand some good cleaning before assembly. The decal sheet is quite simple, as there are not much markings to add actually. However, the decal seems quite well printed. A PE sheet is also provided with engine grills, lifting hooks and storage box caps. A beautiful metal barrel is also provided with a 3D printed muzzle brake. The plastic one is already quite nice, but nothing beats this metal one and a couple of steel cables are also provided. The instructions are a high quality color printing in a glossy brochure. There is a sprue map and color guide for four different brands. Each step of the assembly process is quite clear and easy to follow, as you can see. There are two painting options, both from 1945. The provided profiles are well detailed and in excellent definition. Ok then, let's check the scores for each subcategory of inbox. The kit seems really good with the highest score in almost every item. The major problems, if you can call them major, are the overall injection gauge thickness, which should provide us with some trouble while cutting small pieces out of the trees and during cleaning, and also seam lines which, despite not being caused by any halves offset, will increase the amount of time we spend on cleaning them. So, uh, inbox score is 4.6 out of 5, seems a really great kit. Now let's check if indeed it is. Starting from the wheels and making use of shortcut magic. I find cleaning wheels and tracks a very tedious job of AFV models. It's kind of a paradox for me because I like when they come in separate pieces, but cleaning hundreds of wheels and track links is just a mood breaker. Anyway, taking a closer look again, you can see how accurate these parts are. I didn't count all the bolts and sprocket teeth on each wheel, but they really look like the real stuff. 
I found these walk-around pictures in the primeportal.net. Big thanks to the kind souls that uploaded these pictures. I spent a modest amount of time to clean all suspension arms, gluing them in place along with other details. But it was a piece of cake as the fitting is just great. As I said before, I prefer to start by the wheels and tracks to get rid of it as soon as possible. So I put all the wheels on place and added a few drops of black super glue to hold the wheels together and try to make a jig for the tracks. I have to be honest with you, this is my 11th AFV model and the third with link by length tracks. I like them way better than the Vino ones or those that comes in a single piece with the wheels. However, I still didn't figure out a good methodology to deal with them while assembling. The problem really appears on the idle and sprocket wheel turns. I tried to put the links on the place using the wheels as guide and a drop of Tamiya super thin glue, just to hold them in place. The idler wheel radius is quite small and really doesn't help. As you can see, the pieces shaking loose just show my lack of skills dealing with this. Placing the links on the sprocket wheel seemed to be a little easier, as the sprocket teeth would work in my favor, holding the links in place. But I couldn't be more wrong. The fitting is a bit tight between tracks and sprocket wheels and also between each track link. To make it even worse, the scale doesn't help a lot and there is almost no grip for my tweezers. I lost the track of time I lost looking for pieces scattered on the floor. There is really nothing else I could do because there are no square link pieces. So that one's not coming back. <sighs> oh boy, my patience was really going away with each track link ejection. But you know, we can't keep it. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 <sighs> Thanks, Michael. I can't reproduce all the swearing for obvious reasons. But I took a deep breath, tried some meditation, and finally I made it. Then, with my heart filled with fear, I took the sprocket and idler wheels out of with the tracks and glued the remaining pieces. And voila! One more closer look. This track definitely beats aftermarket products in this scale. The amount of details and injection quality is really amazing. I was very happy, despite all the painful process. Then I remembered I had to make one more. This time I tried a different approach, assembling the track links in different sections and later using the road wheels in place to give the correct shape to the track. I guess this way was a bit easier, but not easy. I think the model company should provide a jig to help with the tracks, it would be very handy and avoid some unnecessary tears. Ok, moving to the upper hole. First step is to glue the mantlet. Comparing it with the picture of the real piece is noticeable two small gaps on the sides, which I will have to fill later. Also, I wanted to make some adjustments on the mud guards, like cutting the molded headlight wire and scraping and sanding the plastic to get a more realistic thickness on the mud guard. I could use a rotary tool for this, but I really prefer to make it slowly until I'm satisfied with the result. The kit mud guard is not super thick, but the difference before and after is quite big. Then I place a lead wire for the headlight and fill the gaps between the upper hole and mantlet with black super glue. It looks quite messy, but I will clean it later. While it dries, I glue the muzzle brake on the metal barrel and the metal barrel to the plastic mantlet. When everything was dried, I cleaned the excess black super glue with the bonder. I really love to use black super glue and the bonder. It was a game changer for me. And I find this process quite satisfactory to see also. 
The rear plate it needed some scraping and sanding to better fit between the upper and lower holes. That was a quick fix, just a few minutes to adjust the piece. A small gap on the upper side was filled with stretch sprue. In the place there is a weld bead, so I just gave a good extra thin glue wash on the stretched sprue and with a few passes of a blade made the weld beads texture. A minor gap in front of the upper hole and lower hole were slightly sanded and the plastic dust was used as filling, just adding some glue to fix it in place. Another small modification was drilling the lock pins on the towing hooks. This might go unnoticed in a first look on the scale, but I think adds a nice touch to the models. Now some PE parts, first I glue the engine grills on the back of the upper hole. They are very nice, but I want some damage, so I pressed the tweezers here and there. Then I made some holes to try a more natural look. After this, it's time to bend tiny PE pieces, the hooks of the side armor plates. As you can imagine, I spent some time looking for one or two of them on the floor of my workbench but I gladly managed to find everyone, because there are no spare parts. Now moving to the casemate. I think the texture was too smooth, so I soaked the surface with cement and gave a rough beating with an old stiff brush. After it dried I gave a quick sand to smooth it a little bit again. We need to be careful with textures in 7 second scale because it's easy to overdo the effects and end up with almost cast and steel texture, which is not what I was looking for, just a slice rougher texture than the plastic ones. Adding the tools on the sides of the casemates demanded some extra work. The guiding pins were too small, which didn't help a lot to hold the pieces on place and also the arrangement of the tools is quite busy. Furthermore, despite the tools are nicely detailed, there are some good cleaning to do. The seam lines are very visible and demanded some scraping and sanding, but in the end they are a nice touch to the kit. Now some more modifications. I scraped and sanded the exhaust heat shield to make them look a little bit beaten up. Not as good as a metal one, but I liked the result. The casemate roof also demanded some adjustment, as the fitting was too tight. After some back and forth process of sanding and dry fitting tests, the pieces came together with almost a click sound. Back to the upper hole rear. There are some pre-molded lift and hooks on the engine cover, but they don't look like hooks. Gladly there are some PE hooks to replace the plastic ones, it's just a matter of cutting the plastic and gluing the PE ones. The kit comes with plastic handles also. They are good, but probably would give more work to take them from the sprue and cleaning them than make any ones from wire, so I drilled some 0.2 and 0.3 mm holes and placed the wire ones. I decided to left the commander and loader hatches in open positions, so I replaced the plastic handles and lock by new ones made of 0.1 mm copper sheet. I tried to simulate the axis bolt by stamping the copper with a needle. I guess I could make a little bit better, but I lost so many pieces during the process that my patience also got lost. And also I might have created a big problem now because I don't have figures with nice poses for what I want to do. But I'll have to deal with it later. Now the only thing really weird on this kit. In the instructions the tow cable should fit in the strap but the pre-molded lock pin doesn't let you. 
so I cut a pin, but then there is no room for the lock pin, like in this picture. So I decided to make a new one from copper sheet. I cut some 1mm wide stripes, punched a hole with a pin, then I marked bending lines, punch the second hole, cut the excess and glue the strap in place and use a copper wire as a lock pin. I guess the result is pretty nice, much better than the plastic one. Back to the mud guards. In almost every picture of the Yag Panther, they look totally beat. So I used some brute force to bend and give a more operational look to them. And that completes the assembly. You will notice that I made some steel cables out of copper wire. I found the ones made of steel that comes with the kit too hard to give the shape I wanted. Then I opted for a more workable material and made them by twisting 2.2 mm electric wires. So this is the kit ready for painting. The assembling process was quite nice and pleasant. In this video I tried to show you the main features, being it good or bad, so you know more or less what to expect during assembly. There are minor fitting and filling problems, which are really easy to fix, so I gave almost the maximum score to these features. The assembling score is 4.6 out of 5. You will see the decals during the painting video, but I can tell you already that they are very good. The final kit score, the average of inbox and assembly, is 4.6, which is a great kit. And that wraps up this video. I hope you liked it and found it useful as a kit evaluation from review to assembly. If you like it, hit the like button. The next video is the painting process from the base color to the weather effects. Hope to see you there. Cheers!